Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to look at the SciQuest 44 drive. This drive came out in 1986, the same year SCSI became a standard, and the same year that the Mac Plus shipped with a SCSI port. It was a competitor to the Bernoulli drive that we looked at in the last video, and this is what its cartridge looked like. Now it's a little different than the Bernoulli drive in that this uses the actual hard disk platter in it, and the Bernoulli drive was sort of a super floppy. And they made these for a few years, and in 1991, I think, they came up, they doubled the capacity to 88 megabytes. And these seem to be the favorite of people in desktop publishing, uh, graphics designers, and so forth, as the preferred backup uh, removable media format. So let's take a look at the back. So the same setup here that we've been looking at, we've got the two 50-pin Centronics SCSI 1 connectors here, we've got the SCSI ID selector here, I've already set that to zero because we know we need it to be zero to work with the USB adapter. And as usual, we will put a terminator on down here because it'll be the last device on the chain. And then we'll put on the SCSI 1 to SCSI 2 adapter. And, of course, the USB adapter itself is SCSI 2. One thing that's interesting, I saw a bunch of these for sale on eBay, and I couldn't find one of them of this format, the 4488 megabyte era, that was ever branded SciQuest. It seems that SciQuest only made the actual uh, five and a quarter drive, and other companies made the SCSI housing for it. So if you were a PC owner with a SCSI card, you would just buy this drive and put it into your tower. Uh, and if you wanted external storage, you would buy it from another party that would have already put it in for you. Or you could probably buy these kind of SCSI cases yourself and put it in yourself as well. That's some combination of that. So I thought that was interesting. Later SciQuest drives in the mid-90s when they got in bigger capacity, they definitely were making their own uh, equipment, uh, their own full drive, external drive, and so forth. But in this era, not, I couldn't find any. They might, there might be, but I just didn't see any. So anyway, let's uh, take a break. I will get everything hooked up, and then we'll see if we can get it to work on the iPhone. Okay, and we're back. So I have the iPhone plugged into a dock, and in the back of the dock, I have a Lightning to USB adapter, a USB to SCSI 2 adapter, a SCSI 2 to SCSI 1 adapter, and that's plugged in the back of the SciQuest drive. Everybody got that? Okay, let's see if this works. Now, unlike the Bernoulli drive I did in the last video, I can put this disc in ahead of time without the power on. Hey Siri, fire up the SciQuest 44 drive. Another Reagan Air drive coming up. Okay, there it is. So we'll go on my phone here. I've got a folder full of pictures and music. Let's move that down to the SideQuest drive. Activity lights going crazy there. Okay. Let's go on to the actual SciQuest disc. Got some uh, pictures here.
time, let's try out a song. We'll let that cache for a few seconds. Okay, so let's turn this off. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that the iPhone Files app does not have an eject button. So when it comes to removable media, you always have to turn it off and then back on and hold down the eject button and wait for the disk to eject. The SideQuest drive is a little different. It has the manual eject, so we don't actually have to power it back up. I just hit this button here, and this little lever comes out. I slide the lever over, and out comes the disk. So there we have it, SideQuest 44 disc working just fine on the iPhone. And this is that Bernoulli disc from the last video. And this being a hard disc technology was undoubtedly faster on a true SCSI bus than this, which was a super floppy. So this tended to be the go-to removable media for uh, people in desktop publishing or or graphics design artists. I think they just needed that raw speed. This probably was a little cheaper as a disc and probably a little bit more reliable with that Bernoulli effect we talked about where there's no way to get a head crash. Consequently, these were used more in governments and large businesses. So that's probably why they split off in those directions. It's not that, you know, either um, group had the other, but for the most part, it seemed to go in that direction. But that's all for this video. Works perfectly fine. I hope you're enjoying these. I will have several more in the future, so please like and subscribe. But that's all for now. Take care.